it may interest you to know that creating a gorgeous cake has gone beyond the use of rose molds, object cutouts, edible papers, and lots more. In the contemporary cake world, artistic cake makers explore possibilities of paintings on cake using edible colors, brush strokes, and other accessories. With more patience and creativity, you can achieve impressive paintings of flowers, images, or characters on fondant or buttercream cake to wow your client. You're welcome to Baker's World on the network service of the NTA. I am Funke Oyele. It's good to know you're watching. Today on the show, if you intend to craft structures, models, or ornaments on any cake, you need to know how to make this fast drying sugar paste called pastillage. We will be showing you how to make a workable pastillage. We will also be showing you how to create and paint a simple castle themed cake. Koko Magiwa Job is an engineer turned cake artist. She is our guest on this episode. You will also get to know more about our guest in our conversation segment. Our focus on Baker's Just Today is a buttercream cake painting tips. Now, if you are a fan of cake painting, this particular episode is a must watch for you because you'll be learning a whole lot. We will be back in a moment. Koko Magiwa Job is a guest on the show today. She is an indigenous of a Kwaibom state. Koko Magiwa Job was born in Kaduna on 6th of September. She was at Air Force Girls Military School, JOS, from 1997 to 2003. Koko Magiwa Job is a graduate of Agricultural Engineering from the Federal University of Technology, Yola, in 2010. She obtained a master's degree in agricultural and bioresources engineering at Namdeziki Way University, Oka, in 2017. Aside being cake maker, Gokoma has authored three ebooks to prefer unique solutions to some problems in the industry. Join us as we chat with this innovative, patient, and dedicated cake artist, Gokoma Giwajo. the creative director of Kokomila Kekri, Kokoma Giwa Jo. You're welcome to Baker's World. Thank you very much. You studied engineering in school. How did you go from engineering to becoming a professional cake maker? I would say it all started from when I had to go for my service year and I had a, a, a colleague was actually a baker and she was actually baking cakes for some of her friends and all that and I got like in ties and I was like oh wow I'd like to know what you're doing and she just uh, showed me how to do it. I, I, while seeking for a job I just found myself um, practicing baking and all that and with time I just discovered that I had that interest in it and as such I just decided to go train with a professional. And that's how I started my baking business. How would you say that your background in engineering has helped you, especially when it comes to creating a cake that has structure base? Especially today, where you're going to be making a cake with a castle on it. Yes, my background in engineering actually is a plus in this because um, back then in school, I did a lot of engineering drawings. I got to some machines and structure and aside that right from childhood I always I had always had that um, play and love for art so I always found myself growing and all that. Let's talk about the cake you're making for us today. You're doing a lot of paintings on it and you're going to build a castle on top of the cake. What's the process going to be like? How you how would you go about achieving 
that. Okay, um, actually the cake I'll be working with today is um, actually going to be a castle themed cake in the sense that it's going to have a creation of a mini castle in, a, in an um, in an air environment that is quite green and cool with nature and everything. So the castle itself will be made with a paste called pastelage and that uh, pastelage is actually a paste used for mostly structural work because of how hardened it gets when you use it to carry out structural work like that you will be seeing on, um, for the castle. And um, the painting is going to be done using edible paint on the cake. And you're going to be seeing lots of effects like the ocean view, the green grasses. And I'm also going to be showing how the regular cereal at home can be used to create some kind of wonderful bushes and tree effects on the cake. For some of the problems that you've encountered, you know, while doing this business, how do you prefer solution to some of the business that you've encountered while doing business? Having the engineering background, I have this love for values, numbers and calculations and all that. So I was able to discover that there was this challenge of cost and pricing. After going into deep research, I was able to now design a costing and pricing worksheet that, in, that can be used by any baker anywhere across the world. It's actually been designed with simplicity at heart. Most softwares that are, are, are costing and pricing softwares available are usually very, very expensive. Most of them are subscription based, you have to pay monthly and all that. But this is something that is a one time thing. You have it for life, you keep it, and you can use it for as long as possible. Where do you see yourself in this business in the next 10 years? In 10 years, I, uh, I would love to have my name become a household name and known for offering quality services in terms of even our bespoke cake designs. I also look forward to um, owning a, a cake um, and confectionery school where it can be focused on training young ones, these young ones that had that interest in learning cake, the art of cake and um, big decoration. And I'm also talking about having a virtual environment like a, an online school whereby People all over the world can come in to learn things about cake, cake art, the business of running a cake business and epic and all that. Um, thank you very much. It's really been fun having this conversation with you. Thank you very much. And that was our conversation with the creative director of Kokomina Cakery, Koko Magiwa Chuk. Next on the lineup for you is Baker's Cheese. See you after this time out. Painting is fast becoming a trend amongst artistic bakers. It might interest you to know that you can unpaint your amazing designs on either your buttercream or fondant cakes. Cake painting is a relaxing way of expressing your concepts on your cakes that any art inclined person can appreciate. This cake decorating techniques requires much patience, time and creativity to achieve a great job. Our focus on Baker's Just Today is on buttercream cake painting tips. Buttercream cakes are fragile and more delicate to handle when it comes to painting. But here are some amazing tips that could help you achieve a fantastic painting on this cakes. Bake your cake and allow it to cool. Prepare a Swiss meringue buttercream as it's easier to paint on. Cover the cake with buttercream icing and put it in the refrigerator to chill. Ensure you have necessary tools such as palette knives, gel food coloring, brushes, toothpicks, or a skewer. Sketch out your designs, mix colors, and start to paint. Paint from back to front, starting with the background. 
If things are getting too soft, put the cake back in the refrigerator and chill until firm. Now, painting on buttercream is not exactly like normal painting, but it's not hard to do if you stick to the right techniques. Pasta Arch is a sugar paste icing that becomes extremely strong when it dries up. This is what we will use to make the element we need to construct our castle cake. On this segment today, our cake is already baked and our cake artist Kokoma Gira Job and our assistant will be showing us how to prepare a workable pasta arch. Let's hand over to our baker now. Don't go anywhere. So today I'm going to be showing you how to make parsley art. For that we'll be needing icing sugar, water, CMC and vegetable shortening. So first of all we're going to measure out our icing sugar on our um, electronic scale. It is expected that you precede the um, icing sugar because if you don't do that you could end up having lumps and that is not going to be very nice for the recipe. So the next thing I'm going to be adding is CMC and I'm going to be adding about one and a half tablespoon of CMC. It is important that you level up the tablespoon of um, the CMC, it shouldn't be heaped up. So I'm going to first mix up this with my hands. The next thing is I'll now have to measure out one quarter cup of room temperature water. I'm going to turn this in. So I'm going to first mix up this with my hands. At this point, I will have to turn this onto my work surface and continue the kneading process. Our pastillage is actually ready now. I'm rolling this into a ball because once you're done kneading your pasty large, the next thing that you have to do is you have to wrap it up with a clean film. Now, you can't use this immediately. You will need to allow this to rest for a couple of hours, for a minimum of three hours before usage. Today, we're going to be making a castle themed cake. And for that, we'll be needing two sets of cakes. One is a six by seven inches height uh, square cake, which is here, which I have here. Cakes are going to be used to um, pull out a very, very wonderful castle thin cake design. So the first thing I'm going to do now is I'm going to have to fill up my six inches square cake. The size 12 cake was carved out as you can see in steps so this is buttercream that i'm going to be using to sandwich each layer of cake you see here I have my cakes all stacked up. The next thing I'm going to be doing now is I'm going to crumb coat this cake. Now I'm going to be using my um, plastic scraper to scrape up the size of this cake so as to get an even surface of the very sizes. After baking the 12 inches square cake, I used a serrated knife to carve out these um, steps that you're seeing. So now I am going to quickly from coat this cake now. Yeah. 
so I am done from coating the 12 inches square cake. This is a ready made fondant and before you can actually start working with this it's very important that you knead before you roll out or start any form of work. So my assistant here is going to knead this fondant for So now I'm going to take the measurement of the rolled out fondant to determine the length. Okay, so this is about 25 inches long. So I'm going to cut both edges to get a straight edge and recheck the measurement. So we have a height of 7 inches. And now I'm going to roll this up. 7 inch cake to roll out the fondant and cover the 12 inches cake. Cutting up the excess. I'm going to drive this thing. Rare icing helps to hold the cakes together and place on it. Now I'm going to ensure that the cake is centered well on the cake. So the next thing now is our pastelage that we kept aside is set. So I'm just going to be showing you how we are making, going to be making little pieces of our castle, a mini castle that is going to be placed on this cake. So I'm going to cut out a piece of the pastelage now and roll out. So I'm done rolling this out. So now I'm going to cut out. So what we need to do is I'm going to show you an example for the top story. So I'm going to cut this into four parts. One, two, three, four. Next, I'm going to cut out the individual pieces. So I'm going to now be painting up this cake to have a kind of wonderful um, setting of nature and all water effects where we have our castle placed on top by the time our castle is all ready. A part of it is going to have green and part of it has the river effect. So I'm going to start with that of the green square.
So there's, there's going to be a tree here, so I need to achieve that using um, colored fondant too. I have this fondant very, very dark. To adhere this to the uh, tree, it's important that I use royal icing, not water, not edible glue. Royal icing because it holds it better and it tends to dry faster. So I'm done. Um, applying the shrub. So the next thing I'm going to attach is a touch of color to represent flowers. The next thing is I'm going to be using a different shade now which is the brown color. It's down to a more like a cut going up here. To apply is these rocks. We actually made of um, past lash and colored black. As you can see, this lovely ocean effect, the path, and the green area. So now to the main theme for today is our castle topper. So I'm going to be placing that here. It has been assembled. So I'm just going to place that here and do a little decoration on it. So before I place it on the top, because I would like it to adhere to the top, I'm going to apply some real icing. I'm going to center it. So this is our castle themed cake. Wow, wow. This is very, very beautiful. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. I love it. There's so many colors, so many elements. And what did you make this with? Um, I used golden moon and royal icing. Golden moon, wow, wow. Yeah. And it's so strong. Yes, I allowed it to dry up. This is such an amazing cake. You have to agree with me that our baker has done a wonderful job on this cake. So many elements, paintings, colors. Some parts are still very tender, so I'm not going to spin it too much. But you can see from all angles, this is, a, this is an amazing job. If you're the type who likes castle toppers, paintings on your cake. This is one thing that you can always go for. So that's all we have for you today on Baker's World. So we'll come your way next week with another interesting and exciting episode of Baker's World. You can follow us on all our social media platforms, Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. It's Baker's World on MTA. I will see you next week. I am Funke. Oui, elle est pas